new Minecraft look, stronger dog armor, new bogged loot, and a complete overhaul of item data. Hello there, Ray here. There is a lot of new changes in this recent snapshot 24w09a which will eventually be for the full release of Java Edition 1.20.5 and 1.21 which is coming around June this year. Make sure you're still subscribed and let's see all the new stuff. First up is the new UI or user interface. Look at this guys, you can see right through the background here when starting a new world. Now you can watch the panoramic as the world is loading up. And even in game, when you come to the menu here, you can easily see the rest of the game behind you, but it is blurred. Now you can change the amount of blurring here in the accessibility settings. Personally, I would like probably no blurriness so that I can pause the game and easily see what's going on in the background. But it's no longer super dark. And you don't have to do like the F3 escape just to get a clean look. Now if you do want the old look, you can always come back and add it back in. But you'll still get the darker surroundings when accessing different containers and books within the game. When it comes to the end poem, when you defeat the ender dragon, I'll now be displayed in front of the end portal texture animation. This definitely gives it a more futuristic vibe. Do you like this alteration? Wolf Armor got a huge buff today and that has to do with when flying it to dogs. Instead of before where the dog would take some damage and the armor would remove some damage that they took, now the dog will take no damage until the armor actually fully breaks. You can even see when the armor is taking some durability, it'll make some particles. Plus when the armor starts to break, you'll see more cracks along the edges compared to a fully healed one. So the dog takes more damage, it's eventually going to create more cracks on the dog armor. So now you see it broke again while the entire time the dog still has full health. Now they did say that the dogs are supposed to have 40 health. At the moment it's only four hearts. This is probably a bug and they'll increase it. So overall the dogs should have more health. Armor is also lasts longer than it did before. Plus they don't take most damage until the armor breaks. So only once it has completely broken, you can see the dog has full health. And the dog will start taking actual damage, which is really nice because now as long as your dog has some armor on it, you know it's not taking any damage. Plus, you can keep track of how broken the armor is, so you know when your dog might start taking some damage. But they also added so we can now repair dog's armor while it's actually on the dog. Just by using some of the armadillo scutes, if we would right click on it, you can see it repairs those cracks. So if you carry some armadillo scutes with you, you can repair your dog's armor while you're out on a journey. This will make it much more useful to have dogs inside of farms, such as like using them in a mop farm where they can take a little bit of damage when there's a rare chance of a skeleton with some thorns. But with this armor, we can now have it so that the dog will be safe for quite a while before having to heal it or repair its armor. And just like other things that have durability, you can see this with a total of 64 of them and you can even repair them by putting two of them together. Now having scutes inside of a dispenser with a dog with broken armor in front of it isn't going to automatically repair it. And you cannot use a dispenser with wolf armor to automatically apply it because they don't want people to grief other people's dogs by putting armor onto them. Which means we have to repair the armor or feed the dogs manually using a player which makes this whole system not as automated as i would wish but you can farm up skews from armadillos so you can automate some of this process but there is some types of damage that are done which won't be protected by the armor similar to how armor doesn't protect the player from everything but i'm really glad they listened to everybody's suggestions and making the dog armor stronger as well as more user friendly they also listened to our suggestions about dyeing the wolf armor so now we can dye it just like leather armor so by putting in different amounts of different colors inside of the crafting grid you can get different shades of wolf armor and then when you apply this onto the dog you can get a very unique color you can still take the armors off by using a shear so you can swap out with a different color if you like it let me know what you think about the stronger dog armor and the ability to customize your dogs beyond just dyeing its color. And of course, I'll be putting these stronger dogs into my different farms to see how they do. And you can watch me do this live over at my live stream and even join us in this world. All thanks to Bisect Hosting, which is where you can get your very own Minecraft server and enjoy all the fun that comes with it. And by using my special code or link in the description, you can get 25% off. Plus, this also helps me out. So thanks everybody who took advantage of this.
The new bog mob from last week now has the mushrooms actually extend off of its head when before they were flat. This is really cool. So you can definitely see there is a red mushroom over there. Also got a little brown one. And inside over here in this corner, we have another little brown one that is growing off of it. Very cool as the bog is like covered in moss. It makes sense that mushrooms have started growing on it. And we can actually get these mushrooms off them. So if we would use a shear on it, you can see it dropped two brown mushrooms. And when you look at it, now it doesn't have any mushrooms on it whatsoever. This is similar to using a shear on like a red mushroom or a brown mushroom and it will drop some mushrooms. But when it comes to the bog, every time you sure it'll drop two mushrooms. It can either be two red ones, two brown ones, or one red and one brown. This is a really cool little side feature and could be useful in like a skyblock world where normally getting mushrooms can be difficult as you have to get them from wandering traders. But otherwise you could try to find a special biome that's a swamp or mangroves and then come along and shear them off to get your very first mushrooms. Now using a dispenser with some shears with the bog in front of it does also work in getting the two mushrooms as items. So you could set up an automatic farm where these mobs spawn in from the player and then come in front of some shears to make a kind of odd mushroom farm. Although it's better to just let the mushrooms grow on their own and have them collected. Do you think they should add more small things like this to other mobs? There has been a complete rework when it comes to the extra information which is on different items. If you take a look at a normal block, at the very bottom of this pop-up here you can see it says 4 components, or before we talk about NBT. This is a big change to how item stack specific properties are being stored and represented. If you look at an item that has more stuff on it, like this one has been named plus it has some enchantments on it, you can see down below it says 6 components. Now the reason why they switched over from NBT system to this new component one is to improve performance in cases where the game needs to frequently look up some properties such as like when my armor is trim and rendering it every frame. This was also done to validate the item properties at load time, enabling easier identification of invalid data in commands as well as in data packs. So if commands don't work, it should be more obvious. And the third reason is that they did this to continue to evolve the game to enable creations of dynamic content. As you can imagine, the game is getting quite old now, so they kind of need to constantly update it. Otherwise, there will still be the same old ways of having to do stuff, which can be quite inefficient. But it comes at a cost as it will have a significant breakage of different data packs and custom maps. But they're hoping since they came out with all of these changes, which are quite large all at once, people can update their maps once and then we won't have to do this anymore going forward in the future. But due to how this is going to impact the game, they are asking for help if they happen to not implement any useful changes that were in the past that can't be done now. So if you're like a map maker or work with data packs and you notice you're losing some function with these new changes, they're asking for feedback, which I'll have a link down in the description. So you're going to have to use like new format and new wording when using a lot of different things, including custom data, damage, repair cost, unbreakable, enchantments, stored enchantments, custom name, lore, can break, can place on, die cutter, attribution modifiers, charge projectile, intangible projectile, bundle contents, map cutter, map decoration, map ID, custom model data, potion contents, Writable book contents, written book contents, trim, suspicious stew, hidden additional tooltips, debug stick state, entity data, bucket entity data, instrument, recipes, lodestone target, firework explosion, firework, profile, no block sound, base color, banner patterns, pot decoration, container, bees, block, container loot, block entity data, block state, enchantment glitter override, and when it comes to commands, there is some changes to syntax for the give command, the item command, the loot command, and the clear command. Item stack format has also changed, with the name as the ID and the number of them as the count. And there are some other format changes. Loot item functions also change, as well as the predicate format when it comes to loot tables and advancements. Which does make you wonder since they are changing how the block entity data works, maybe they can finally implement pushable tile entities into the job edition like they have in the bedrock edition. We can push like chest around. What do you think? So the resource pack was updated to version 27 as well as 28 to handle all these changes. I've linked the article down below if you want to take a look at it in more detail. Also got some new texture looks so it doesn't look so much like the actual trial spotters. You can see they got more of the tough like colors on the top and bottom where they have the spotter likeness on the sides. Overall I think it's a really cool textured block. What do you guys think? 
Now if there's any errors that occur while you are playing the game, loading or saving chunks, there will be a new air toaster that will pop up on the side letting you know of this. You also get a special toaster when you try to join a single player role with less than 64 megabytes of free disk space and this warning will continue to pop up throughout the game so that you know that your game isn't being saved properly. Now the wind charges which are shot from the breeze as well as those that are shot from the player. They remove the randomness when it comes to the radius of the explosion area where these guys hit onto things. This should make it a bit more consistent when using these. But there is still randomness when shooting them in a straight line. Notice that when you see it flying away, it can either be kind of like in the top right corner of where my cursor is, or it can be in the other four quadrants. So it doesn't necessarily fly straight. So there's still randomness when it comes to them being shot out. Last time there was this known bug where if you would fall with a wind charge, you're normally not supposed to take damage, but you were. So now I don't take any fall damage. Because wind charges that miss the player would eventually just continue flying through the air, they never had a despawn timer, so they could just end up being in unloaded chunks. This wasn't intended, so they went ahead and added a despawn timer. So I have both a wind charge that comes from an actual breeze that I just removed the momentum from, and I also have a charge that comes from the player that's bouncing between two breezes as I showed earlier in this video here, which makes the slowest clock in Minecraft. And after waiting here a long time, you can see that neither of these charges actually despawn. So I don't know if this change is actually implemented in the game yet. Now when it came to tipped arrows, like this is a turn last arrow, you can see when it hits something, it's gonna give different effects for only two seconds. And in the past, you could just take one of these arrows, shoot it into the ground, and then it would sit there until the arrow would despawn, but the effect was always on the arrow. So as soon as it came in contact with somebody underneath, then that person was given the effects. But apparently in the code, it was actually set up so that the arrows should lose their effect after 30 seconds. So now the potion effect will go away. And then when it hits you, you don't get any potion effect. But as long as you keep the arrow moving, you can keep the effect on it. And at any point you could drop them onto like a mob or a player. So you could have had a bunch of them like stored up and then you could drop them onto mobs while you're not there and still get the special loot that only comes from players like blaze rods. Fire resistance got a buff today to be like bedrock edition. Notice the bedrock edition how far you can see in this scenario here when taking fire resistance while under lava. And then compare this to how Java used to be where you could barely see two blocks in front of you. Which will make it more viable to look for diamonds inside of lava lakes. Since diamonds have less likely to be exposed to air, they can still spawn at their normal rates when in water or lava pools. When it came to the subtitles when extinguishing candles, they were saying fire extinguished. Now these aren't fire, so that's a wrong subtitle. So I updated it to say candle extinguished. And by the way, you can use wind charges to extinguish these. When it comes to our pals, the armadillos, you can no longer use a brush on the baby armadillo to get scute, as adults are the only ones that were supposed to drop it. A problem that a couple of you guys pointed out, which is when you name an item in a previous version before 1.20.4, and then you name an item in the current versions. These two items, despite having the same name, they should stack, but they weren't. So now, once again, you can stack them together. But if you are curious on ways you can get items that look the same, but actually still don't stack, there's a couple of tricks you can do to make this work, which I cover in this video here, which I'll link below. There's also this weird issue here where you could right click onto a lodestone and then when you right click again, you can get another one. But the problem would come when you would drop one of the lodestones and then when you destroyed the lodestone itself, when you tried to pick up the first one, notice they don't stack with each other anymore as it was put into a separate slot. So now they'll automatically find other ones that are similar and stack together. Now you might remember the experimental item called the bundle. This is where you can put a bunch of unique items all into a single container. It only has 64 slots, but if you would put 64 different things in it that were all unique, and then if you would put the bundle and copy it into a shulker box, and then if you would take that shulker box and fill your inventory with this exact same shulker box, due to the way that Minecraft will compress everything into memory, this was very difficult for them to compress. It would start to negatively affect how many milliseconds it took for the game to process one time. So to resolve this problem when it comes to compressing bundles into shulker boxes, the player's inventory won't have a drastic effect on the actual server. It also resolved a leak related to hoppers 
pulling in items. When a hopper would pull in an item, it would keep the unloaded world in memory. It only would stop doing that once the item that it was trying to pull in was actually pulled in in a loaded world. This was affecting performance, so it's great to see that it's been fixed. And several other bugs were fixed, mostly related to clicking buttons. Now come see what crazy stuff I'm up to during my live stream, or check out this playlist all about other crazy glitches in the game. If you have Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime, you do get a free Twitch sub each and every month, so by using that on me is a great way to support me for no extra cost. Otherwise, you can always share what I do with other Minecrafters, and I'll see you guys over there. Bye bye!